1928, Leon Cassidy and Marvin Remfer founded the Pretzel Amusement Ride Company. They specialized in dark rides, often haunted houses, with winding, pretzel-like layouts. There used to be bunches of pretzel rides across America, and lots of rides inspired by their design too. But as for the original pretzels, there's only a few still standing, and we're hitting the road to ride them all. Here's a crash course in pretzel lore. The original pretzel ride, named Pretzel, was built as an alternative to an old mill-style ride at Tumbling Dam Amusement Park in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Building a river ride wasn't feasible, so pretzel founders Cassidy and Remfer made a dry version instead. The concept took the amusement world by storm, and by the early 30s, you'd be hard-pressed to find an amusement park midway that didn't have one. But now, in 2023, Camden Park is one of the last pretzels anywhere. So we can remember which car is ours. And the first on our quest is right here at Camden Park in Huntington, West Virginia. Camden Park is an ancient amusement park, established in 1903. It was originally a trolley park, but had the unusual distinction of not being at the end of a trolley line, as most were. The park is small, humble, but full of amusement treasures if you dig a little. For instance, it has two of the three remaining coasters on Earth built by the National Amusement Device Company, Lil Dipper and Big Dipper. So right across from Camden Park's historic wooden coaster, the Big Dipper, is the Haunted House. The psychedelic mansion of Madness in Motion was recently refurbished and is a true grail for seekers of vintage amusements. A pretzel ride in pristine condition, and even a rarity among pretzels, it's only one of two still standing with a gravity-powered drop. And yes, while you've likely heard of roller coaster enthusiasts, there's also a legion of dark ride enthusiasts across the U.S. who love nothing more than the retro horror thrills of classic haunted establishments with rails running through them. And we didn't have to go far to meet one. I've been a long time Camden Park enthusiast. It's been my dream to work that ride all my life. This is Cole Hogsett. He's one of the operators on Camden's Haunted House. And during his lunch break, he was kind enough to sit down and spook, uh, uh, speak with us about this wackiest of shacks. To give you a little bit of backstory, some of the stunts are Dark Ride Artist Originals, the Bill Tracy Spider, the corpse in the chair. It's a little skeleton sitting in a chair by a window. Some lingo for you. Stunts are the scares on dark rides. Also, there were a few different pretzel car styles over the years. And Camden's is the gravity style car riding on a single rail with wheels that, brilliantly, are too high to both touch the ground at the same time. Meaning that as this thing barrels through its course, it actually tips outwards on every turn, making it feel like it could throw you out of your seat at any moment and cast you into the demon realm. Also, the guy Cole mentioned, Bill Tracy, is a dark ride legend. He was a designer who started out making displays for Ringling Brothers, Macy's, parade floats, you know, happy stuff. But eventually found his real niche, creating the horrifying displays inside the dark rides built by Pretzel and others. Nobody actually really knows the exact date it was built, but it's estimated sometime between the 40s and the 60s. Reason being, it's a double-decker dark ride, and Pretzel didn't start building those until the 1950s. However, Cole told us that he's heard that it actually started out as a single floor ride, and the second floor was added later. Sometime in the 60s, it's believed. Nobody really knows for sure. What is known for sure is who got it looking so fresh and so clean. Chuck Burnham, an artist from Connecticut, fell in love with dark rides at the age of four when his father scared him on one at Connecticut's Lake Compounds. He grew up fascinated by them and learned the retro art style from another Connecticut artist, Peter Rasulo. Now his creativity and his brush have helped renovate and reimagine dozens of dark rides across America, including this one. Last year, I had the pleasure of meeting Chuck Burnham. I was riding the haunted house and I saw him standing there. I had to introduce myself because I've been a fan of his for a very long time. He's very talented. He, as you can see, his work on the haunted house. He let me personally name the characters on the haunted house. The witch you see by the front, by the loading station, that's Jinx. The buzzards on the roof, the one on this end is Boris, and this one is George. Talented is an understatement. 
Chuck's art is equal parts whimsical and twisted, with splashes of bright colors and vintage style to make you feel like you're stepping back into a 60s horror extravaganza when you board the ride. And it was about time we did just that. Oh boy, oh boy. As they say, they simply don't make them like they used to. The Camden Park Haunted House is one of the craziest rides we have ever been on. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It cannot be overstated how much the rocking chairs make you feel like you could be thrown out of the car on every turn. And I got really excited when Cole pointed out that one of the final stunts on the ride is actually one we have a weird personal connection with. The last devil painting before you go down the last hallway. That's from a movie, I think it was 1950s Santa Claus. Pero este diablo no es carmienta. His name's Pitch. Yeah, the devil. Pitch the devil. <laughs> yep, that, that's him. You can hear me get excited there behind the camera. That's because we love that old movie. El diablo es muchos miles de años más viejo que yo. The movie Santa Claus came out in Mexico in 1959 and is also known as Santa Claus versus the Devil, an unorthodox Christmas movie that partially takes place in hell. Cassie and I watch it every year as an important Christmas tradition. So I had no idea that Santa Claus actually worked with Merlin. Yeah, they're actually in the same union and collaborate pretty frequently. And so there's Pitch the Devil. There he is in our home, and there he is there in the haunted house. What a completely unexpected connection. And it all comes to a halt, not with mechanical brakes, but just a guy who catches your cart at the end. Somewhat more distressingly, in addition to Pitch the Devil, do you know what's also in the haunted house? Real ghosts. At least that's what some people say. The park is said to be haunted. Haunted by an ancient burial mound that's in the park. Yeah, it's right over there by the scrambler. Thousands of years ago, native peoples in East Central America would ceremonially bury their dead under artificial hills made of earth and stone. This one is known as the Adena Mound from the native Adena people, and it has never been excavated. Wow, I'm really excited because I've never actually seen a mound before in person, and this Indian burial mound they estimate could be from 1000 BC. And here it is, right next to the scrambler. I've been told a time or two that people have felt like something's going to push them off the tracks over in the haunted house. Now that could be ghosts, or it could be the ingenious card design. In any case, if online reports are to be believed, if you're afraid of ghosts, you might want to watch out in the tunnels on the Big Dipper at night too. The Camden Park Haunted House is a rare and unique thrill ride, full of genuine thrills and ghastly scares that are absolutely worth the detour. Just like all of Camden Park and its old world charm, it's West Virginia's only amusement park, and to folks like Cole, it's a really special local slice of amusement park history. Anyway, that's one pretzel down, maybe three or four more to go. In the meantime, we hereby induct Camden Park's Haunted House into our offbeat amusement ride Hall of Fame. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's been far too long since we've shot off that confetti. Well, alrighty, until next time, safe travels, and we'll see you again soon for another quick detour.